Madam Chair, Honorable Delegations, representing Ethicas Foundation, we appreciate the effort of the ad hoc committee, its members and staff for drafting the CMB, for facilitating the present session, and for ensuring that the elaboration of a cybercrime convention is an all-inclusive process which includes civil society. In drafting the procedural provisions and provisions of law enforcement, we would like to recommend the following. On Article 41, as has already been pointed out by previous speakers, the scope of the procedural measures should be limited to the investigation of criminal offences set out in this convention only. On Article 42, a significant expansion of the provision is required to cover the following safeguards. A right to an effective remedy for, for violations of privacy must be known and accessible to anyone with an arguable claim that their rights have been violated. As stated by the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights in, in his report, the right to privacy in the digital age, this requires notice that either a general surveillance regime or a specific surveillance measure is in place and legal standing to challenge such measures. Effective remedies must also include prompt, thorough and impartial investigation of all violations. The investigating body needs to have the power to order an end of all ongoing violations, as well as full and unhindered access to all relevant information, the necessary resources and expertise to conduct investigations, and the capacity to issue binding orders. Furthermore, a requirement should be added that any investigative powers listed in this convention must be conducted in ways not to compromise the security of digital communications and services. It needs to ensure that the Convention does not in any way justify government hacking. Government hacking should be outside the scope of this treaty because it is unlike any other form of existing surveillance techniques. It can be far more intrusive than any other surveillance techniques permitting remote and secret access to personal devices and data stored on them, as well as to conduct novel forms of real-time surveillance, like turning cameras and microphones on, manipulate data on devices while erasing trace of the intrusion. It also affects the privacy and security <coughs> of others in unpredictable ways, and it exploits vulnerabilities in systems to facilitate surveillance objectives. In short, Government hacking is at cross with digital security aims. Madam Chair, there is a lot more to say on the remaining provisions. Due to time constraints, however, I will finish here and would like to refer to the interventions of other civil rights organizations in the room and online, as well as to the open letter signed by 79 NGOs from more than 45 countries to raise alarm about the human rights implications of the current draft of the treaty under negotiation. We hope to continue the discussion on these issues and remain available for further input on the individual provisions during the negotiations. Thank you, Madam Chair.